hard copies of the um, presentation, and uh, we do have the Bailey group that will be getting on this line. You want to call them now? Yes. Again, as Mr. Rossi indicated, these items are all related to each other. The committee did meet, the insurance committee, they did meet um, more than once. And then marketability of us being able to attract, recruit, and retain the highest and best for that effort. It, that, that position is critical. And, yes, um, I have a question. And I'm sure you can shed some light on this, but... Just trying to think about all of this from a broader perspective. perspective. Um, I hear from each department that we don't pay our employees essentially market price. Um, our nurses don't get paid, but nurses should get paid. IT doesn't right. get paid, but they should get paid. Man uh, project managers, um, our veteran teachers, support staff, bus drivers, all of this. How is it that other counties, and I don't mean this to be offensively, it's just me thinking out loud. How is it that other counties are able to build new facilities? And I know that they have higher taxes in certain counties. I get that, but there's also some that don't. Um, and then they're able to retain and pay their employees competitively. Maybe not market, and I know that a lot of times, you know, you have to think in your mind, like, you know, I'm not going to, as a nurse, I'm not going to get paid this much at this hospital, but the benefits of, of being at the hospital outweigh what I'm going to be paid. Um, so I, I get that perspective on things. However, I just feel as though we have a $600 million budget. We have a lot going on within that budget, but at the same time, my biggest question is, is why can't we be competitive with every department? And, and I would, can I just add on to that before we, um, so when we talk about apples to apples, I'm talking responsibility to responsibility. So I've heard the same thing about there's more responsibility, we're working really hard, people um, are promoted based on their responsibilities and competitive wages. So I absolutely can compare responsibilities to responsibilities. And I'm going to talk about this because I, I, I know for a fact that teacher responsibilities have quadrupled since I started teaching 20 years ago, all right? Quadrupled. I also know that when we send um, self-contained students out into the regular classroom, so for instance, I know of a teacher who received seven self-contained students on access points. Her responsibility tripled on that day when the state of Florida expects her to do access points on top of everything else she has to do. So if we're talking about money, those raises should not just be, for instance, for a project manager. When we are talking responsibility to responsibility, there is a reason our master teachers are leaving. And there's a reason that our first year teachers have such a high turnover rate. And I think what I'm saying is I wish we just had a freeze on all administrative promotions from one category to another category until we can figure out how to compensate everyone percentage wise equally in this county. And it really bothers me when we're not addressing the majority of our employees, which is instructional staff, saying that their responsibilities have remained the same, that's why they don't get any more money, or their responsibilities are not being compensated because that's what they're supposed to be doing. But in fact, there is a wide discrepancy about if I were to take every promotion or redesignation in the admin office, there's a much bigger increase in salary than I think I've ever seen in my 20 years, and much bigger increase in what we talk about when we're negotiating for their budgets. So I really wanted to, I guess I just have to start spitting it out. Yeah, because absolutely. that's my concern, is that when we give money to somebody else, it it makes it appear they're more important than everyone else. No, no, Working hard. I'm good. I'll provide some facts related to this topic. One, you know, there's good news. The good news would be the last three years, the amount of money that this board has contributed to instructional personnel is higher than any three years in the history of Clay County. Well, Goes all the way back to, to 1857. I mean, they had any three years together, this board put together a compensation package 
higher than ever in history of Clay County. So to say that we're not compensating uh, teachers would be absolutely wrong. Well, TIAS had a lot to do with that in the last three years as well. I know that before so, that, get, it get, get wasn't true. So, so that would be absolutely wrong to even make that statement. I don't have numbers, so I'm not sure what's wrong. So I'm just kind of providing some, some background information mm -hmm. for this. So is it true that uh, veteran teachers um, didn't receive the same level of compensation as others based on the law, as you point out? Mm -hmm. that, that is what happened. There's no mm -hmm. doubt about it. But I would remind the board that that's done through negotiations. It's governed by Florida Statute 447, mm -hmm. which kind of prevents us from bargaining out in the open in mm -hmm. such a way where we talk about that. So in general, I would say I have worked 34 years to provide additional compensation for teachers. When I hear that, it kind of says to me, maybe they just don't know the facts related to this. Well, Mr. Roski, I recently retired. You know how you can go in and you can look at how much you make? When I first started, teaching in Clay County, and I'm just going to tell you the facts. If you did not, if you were just a teacher on the A plan, it was free for you to have insurance. It is not anymore. It is very, very costly to have insurance as just a single teacher without another member on the plan. I can tell you, if you look at my 19 years for 12 years, other than the fact that the state of Florida raised salaries to 38.5 one year, my salary went down one year. In addition, stayed within $1,000 for 12 years. And so when we're talking about it, and maybe we do need to do a presentation to thoroughly explain, because the facts on my website at the Social Security Department are there, and it's a fact. And so to say that when I say I don't think anybody, we should freeze all promotions or whatever until a time that we can figure it out, the fact is, and I'm not sure what facts you're saying I'm wrong on, but I can tell you this. You can look at the Social Security benefits. You can, I will show anybody here if you'd like to go in and look at my Social Security benefits. Did not go up. I did not make $50,000 in my 19th year with two masters, all right? So it, you can try to explain to master teachers such as myself that my facts are wrong, but I, I don't think they're wrong. I didn't, I didn't say that your facts are wrong. I said you didn't have enough information. Oh. I did say a couple facts that are absolutely unequivocally true. I don't the think I gave three, any until just now. But. The last three years have been the highest three years mm -hmm. ever in the history of Clay County. That's a fact. Now, did it go to your, your level on the scale, the answer would be no. That's mm -hmm. salary compression, which is the issue that needs to be resolved. No doubt about it, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm agreeing with you. I, I'm agreeing for more uh, salary increase for teachers. But saying that we're not providing salary compensation increases, now they have to target for the veteran teachers. Um, I had the last 15 years of what you provided in here. Percentages, sometimes, I mean, we can all look at it, it's on the website. Um, how much we've done for the last 15 years mm -hmm. and what that's it included. That's a fact. It's mm -hmm. an unequivocal yeah. fact but that, that the last three years, the compensation package has been But it's a tiny, tiny bit. That's all I'm saying. If not for the first-year teachers, but it's a... It, I would encourage everyone in the board to go to the website and look at the negotiations and what has occurred since 2011 for our teachers, that's all. There and then we can develop I, our own facts. And can, I, can I just add a quick comment? Sure, yeah. I'm there with you. Mm -hmm. I was a teacher during that time. Yeah. And one of the reasons I ran for this particular position mm -hmm. was because there was a superintendent who unequivocally said no to teacher raises. Mm -hmm. And while he was on the school board, every vote he took was a no for teacher raises. And, and truly, during, if we go back, even the board even had the power we go, to say yes, three, three votes out of five, no? Well, there were times when they said no. Now, mm -hmm. let me, if we go back a few years, our county made some decisions, and this comes back to the Skipper's statement. Why can other counties do this that we can't do? 
How, I mean, if you keep, you have to go back a little bit further in history and go back to like 2007 or 2008, if I'm not mistaken, and looking around to see who might have been here during that time. Thank you. That was a horrendous year for this country. I mean, the entire market just went, counties made different choices at that point. And we made a choice to dip into our reserve fund to make certain that we had salaries. First of all, salaries for teachers, salaries. Our administrators, and I, I'm, I shouldn't say administrators, I should say our county, I'm going to say county office relating to all of the people who worked here in Greenville, just using that as an example, took cuts in their pay so that they could maintain their jobs. And at that point, they also took, in essence, for want of a better word, a demotion. To freeze, and so that built up, I mean, that's a foundation that we've been trying to build up from for years, Ms. years. Bullock, I can speak to when I came on the board in 14, mm -hmm. there were um, district level cuts. I mean, we cut to bare bones minimum. Bare, yeah. Um, we stripped the operations department of mm -hmm. a lot of positions. Because we didn't need any building at that point. Correct. So we, um, we, we trimmed the fat to the point that it was painful mm -hmm. and it was at the district level and our administrators I want to say went eight, eight years eight years mm -hmm. eight years without a salary increase no raises eight at years. all for eight years mm -hmm. for administrators that's principals that's mm -hmm. everybody in the district office mm -hmm. so to say we haven't treated our two kinds of employees fairly or equally not fairly equitably equitably that's um, a good word. If, correct, yeah. We haven't, but we've also we've gone years. both ways. And then the next step to freeze any positions mm -hmm. would be to say, we're the largest business in Clay County, and to freeze all of our operations. No promotions for more money. We can't, but we can't. I mean, Everybody can still work hard and get paid, not well, paying people's that, money. But when somebody retires, we have to bring somebody in who is experienced. That's not what's we, going on here. This is They're still working for us. We didn't bring anybody new in. Well, Sorry. we're talking about we're talking about preparing. I understand when you bring someone happen. new in that we need to no, get No, I know, but we're talking in. about people who are leaving. They, they have already filed their... Libraries, you know, public libraries here is have, you know, school board member hours, you know, once a month where the public can come mm -hmm. and meet you and talk to you. Yeah. Y'all will, will, will draw input from your constituents and it's completely appropriate. Marketing or no ma'am. Yeah. No ma'am. And we, and we, we are, are not marketing. <laughs> and also we have in our code of conduct that our students are not allowed to wear any apparel mm -hmm. with it on. So marketing of no type. Um, signage is needed. And I'm glad you brought up about the programs that, that we partner with because we do partner with the Hanley Foundation, Air National Guard, who especially during this time of Red Ribbon Week they come into our schools. So just so you'll know how that works, in actually our section for climate and culture of the weekly briefing, we send out and let all of our schools know, hey, they've got one on alcohol literacy, they've got one on marijuana and vaping. So schools can pick and choose, hey, we would like more information on this and can sign up for that so that we you know, can utilize our partners. Um, also, we partner with the Clay Action Coalition. So the Clay Action Coalition, if we have one of our scholars that does show up with you know, one of these devices, then the first thing we do is there is an online program through Tobacco Free Quark. So the students will go online and we'll do that. If it becomes a persistent problem and a student has been caught you know, more than once, then there, we partner with Clay Action Coalition and there's a family education program which means that there is a six-week program that our student and their parent are required to attend. And throughout that, there are sessions on conflict resolution, on coping strategies, on the effects of vaping, on the effects of alcohol. So it's a six-week course that they are required to attend and that their parents are required to attend. Um, and that's after the second effect? after the third. And at our One Clay Parent Academy, the Clay Action Coalition is actually going to have a breakout session. It's called Hidden in Plain Sight. And it's going to be for parents to be able to recognize 
that hey that highlighter that looks like this is not a highlighter it is actually a vaping mechanism i think the more we can um, educate and empower parents around this issue i think the more successful we'll be in helping students so if y'all have any questions i mean feel free to reach out um you know my phone is open my door is open email whatever works best for you Thank you, Ms. The next parent academy or the first parent academy is on the 11th. 10th. October 10th. 10th. Okay. Wednesday or Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday, October 10th. 10th, October 10th. Thank you. Never check. Yeah. Yeah. What time is it? 7 5 baby. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. starts at 5 15, and then this first session starts at 4. So we'll do dinner, we'll meet in the cafeteria. We'll have an overview and a welcome, and then we'll do a breakout session. We're also going to have um, our vendors in the um, cafeteria that we'll have handouts for parents as well. All right. Thank you, Ms. Fogarty. Our next item is discussion of school visitations, and this is something that was brought up by Ms. Skipper, so I'll give her the floor. Mm -hmm. Just work. <laughs> um, so I I realized um, that we do not have a visitors policy um, amongst some things that has been brought to my attention over the last two three weeks, and um, I searched a couple of surrounding counties and, and their policies. I submitted them to uh, Mr. Walker uh, and have been speaking to him on and off and um, I think that it would be in our best interest as a board um, to implement a visitor's policy and um, the surrounding, well the majority of the state from what I was told has similar policies and um, implements some degree of background checks for um, visitors and for um, um, any any individual who's going to be around students. Mm -hmm. um, so I feel very strongly and very passionate that we implement something along the lines of this um, for safety purposes. And I'll let Mr. Black talk to me. For sure. No, I, I, I appreciate that. Thank you for, um, thank you for again. This is another policy where y'all, you know, school board members, you know, constituents, are going to bring things to your attention. So I'd encourage y'all to do exactly what the Skipper did. Bring it to y'all for see if there's something you want to discuss more. So um, some of this I'm going to turn over to the city or not, who's a parent still has legal rights to their child. That's also on that. Case too, right? So it becomes a more complicated issue. When that occurs, um, that individual is escorted to their parent conference or to whenever their, 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 the reason that purpose could be you know, it is. So the, so um, I kind of spot checked, you know, with a couple because we know exactly um, individuals involved in this particular type of thing. Uh, and we monitor those individuals while they're on campus. It'd be difficult to say that that would be true for a thing like a football game, for example. You can't really do that uh, at a football game. Um, I spoke to three or four principals who I've seen uh, have recently been involved in a situation like this to see the exact procedure that's followed at that particular school. There is a, there is a whole guide, a procedural guide for how this actually works. Well, it's not in board policy. It is a process currently being employed. Now, if there's a, a school that is not implementing it correctly, all that would require is a, is a phone call to deal with that school that's not implementing it correctly. Um, but there is a pro I just wanted to assure the board, there is a process in place for how to handle the situation. This situation has been occurring since the beginning of time when it comes to public schools. Public schools are made up of individuals with children who are sent to public school who 
you have all kinds of backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And they also have all kinds of rights related to their job educational process. So um, I guess that's how I would leave it. Sure. And just if I could, just to draw y'all's attention, and, and and again, there's there's this this is it's important to have these discussions so we understand this is and this would be part of your policy review. So the statute that that addresses the visitation specifically is Florida Statute A five six point zero two two. What this addresses specifically when there are certain types of offense. Child supervised? Is that what we're saying? That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Now, it, it, it depends on, not, not to get too far in, 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 into this. I'm just this. trying to figure it out because I know the thousand feet from the school, like there's rules, right? That's that that's correct. So so that 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 law is in place that if you were a registered sex offender, you cannot go within a thousand feet of the school. The exception is if you have a child in that school or you're the mm -hmm. caregiver for a child in that school, you can visit the school for a school related function if you're supervised. And there has to be a notification and registration process. So what about eating lunch? They can go every day and eat lunch. Are they going to be with other children? Or are we going to make sure that this visitation is supervised away from other children? Because just because they're allowed to be around their child because the crime wasn't committed with their child, how are we able to protect well, all students? It could be the same for volunteering. They would not be allowed to mm -hmm. to volunteer. They're not allowed to be chaperones. Okay. Just want to be clear on that. Mm -hmm. And does this rapture trip. system? Is it a just so I'm I'm clear of its capability? Does it do background checks? Yes. Does mm -hmm. it do? Yeah, it goes, goes right to the registration. Raptor does. So individual is uh, on the registry as an offender mm -hmm. or as a predator. Either are because there's two different classifications of folks. But it's not the same degree as like a teacher would have a background check. Yeah, right, right. 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 And, and, and that would be really expensive and right. it would be crazy. But but this is what a lot of schools across the county do is at least a a simpler form of a background check to say, hey, you're a go or you're a no-go. You know what I mean? Correct. And that's the rep Right. And that's what I want to make sure that we have. And I wanted to understand. Um, well, I can tell you uh, where my kids go to school. If you are going to chaperone or if you are going to volunteer or if you are going to be put with other children, um, in an unsupervised fashion, potentially, um, you have to have a background check. Right. So it's not, um, oh. Raptor is not sufficient for that. Right. But for visiting the school, yes, you can just scan your driver's license and. Well, I think that the policy that I presented or, or just sent over as an example covered both visitation and volunteering, where um, you wouldn't need the background check if you're going to, like, a, I think it said, like a PTA. <coughs> It sounds like this is a very complex issue <laughs> with a lot of layers because on one hand um, you don't want to infringe on a parent's right to their child, right? Right, right. And that's and why we, I said you And we don't want to discriminate mm -hmm. against international parents or, you know, right. that there's a lot of layers here. So I want to be delicate in how we handle it. But that policy that I presented covers all of that. And that's what I mean by that. Like, it... it Unless you're alone and not monitored, then you wouldn't need all that. You would just need these basic things because you're with a, a teacher. And Mr. Walker can. Sure. No, absolutely. I appreciate you bringing this up because it's important to, to, to understand. For so there are things that the school district has to do legally. So if if you're a predator or if you're listed on the uh, as a sex offender, you cannot work at the school. You can only access the school based on what I read earlier if you have a child there supervised or register so register sex offenders that's off the table you know unless you meet that very specific criteria okay. is is to just buy them out right now mm -hmm. so you never see them again you never see them again <laughs> say that way. Or not that way the legal guys right or uh, you know if you pay them 
you know, one way of looking at this, and I'm just, I'm from New York, so I just say it, is you'd be, you'd be paying them for not doing anything. Mm -hmm. That kind of, just coming from a hard working family of 10, that, and that rubs me the wrong way because he should do the work. He can always, as a board, put parameters, like not attending meetings and doing all those kinds of things, but to give something to somebody for free does not, uh, doesn't sit well with me, just to kind I of mean, I, We have resignation, rescinded resignation, rescinded our rescinding of the resignation. This is not something new for this board. Uh, I know one meeting, Ms. Clark and I tried to rescind our rescension. I don't even know how to, it got pretty confusing at one point, but. That was a, that was a good time. I think Ms. Skipper was confused about it as well, but this is something that's been, it's been ongoing for a while and it's not, this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. I mean, this is our whole goal was to get our new attorney to replace Mr. Victor. It would have been last January or February had it have moved along the way it did. Mr. Walker, and I don't mean to put you on the spot and make it awkward, and you can divert this question if you, if you need to. Do you feel, well, <laughs> Well, do you, do you feel the transition has happened? It's happened, and do, are you able, I shouldn't say, um, <clears throat> do you feel his services are still needed? Well, I... I Not to be... <laughs> no, but, 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 please, <laughs> please let me answer that question, but before, let me just say, if I can, thank you for the prayer. I appreciate each of y'all have been very welcoming in your staff. Um, you know, as attorneys, we take great pride in our work. You know, the ability, especially being the outside counsel, we're not full employees of the school district. Um, you know, I take great pride in the work that we bring to the table, myself and John. Um, you know, John's from Clay County. His family's from here. This is important for us to, to serve y'all so y'all can candidly do a great job for your constituents and, and the residents of Clay County who trust y'all and have great confidence in y'all. Uh, part of, of being in an attorney role, it can be a difficult role because you want to timely turn out legal work and you all have a lot and, and that's not that's not a criticism, that's the reality of it, it's a growing school district. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, the one thing that always makes you nervous as an attorney is you want to make sure, you know, you lay... Because sometimes I know that it's just I'd rather do it myself kind of thing and so that's why I asked and they very blunt. Yeah, for sure. Sorry. For sure. And, and there are some challenges right now. I mean, candidly, you have, you know, he's been doing this a long time. We have we have different opinions, a different different way we we advise y'all. Uh, that's not to say he's wrong or right. We have a different interpretation of some of this. So. So, my thoughts. Um, and I think we had talked before about segmenting out. Um. You know, I know Ms. I just heard Mr. Blocker say that sometimes they have a difference of opinion on legal issues. I believe so. Is that yeah, I think as long as you have consensus on, on the direction that you would like to go, to do that, the the, um, the board would just have to give us clear direction as to how you'd like that to go. I've already, just as superintendent, I can tell you, I, with issues that are related to board issues, I only speak to Mr. Blocker related to those topics because I realize that um, that's important that's your, that's your, that's your attorney your board mm -hmm. attorney uh, Mr. Bickner still does answer phone calls and respond to things related to um, uh, district or Clay County School stuff that's still going on you know to this day but anything related to you I think it's important that's in a transition that you have one voice and that I go through that voice related to issues involving the board. There are many other issues other than board issues that occur too. So. Um, Mr. Blocker, yes, I know you're working a lot. Is it county things or is it us? I'm, I'm sorry, is it the it? county, like uh, everything the county brings to you, or is it us? For us. This, um, <laughs> like